multitude and they came upon Jesus. And in verse 14 it said, And Jesus went forth and he saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. Yeah. That compassion literally comes from a Greek word that means internal organs. The Greek philosophers of that day would look at great compassion and empathy as literally coming from one's entrails, the reins within their being. We have that kind of a passion that kind of a burden for the loss in Fayetteville out here. He said that there was churches in the community that was not being very, very uh, good stewards to a lot of lost people in the neighborhood. And I pray to the Lord above that the Gatewood Brethren Church has a passion, an inward, burning in my range desire to see people saved, to see churches united and be revived for the cause of Christ. Praise God. A yearning, Jesus had a compassion. He began to heal their sick. Amen. When he was healed, he was saved. Praise God. Verse 15, and when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Now get them something to eat. Jesus said unto them, look what he says in verse 16, they need not depart, give ye them to eat. Amen. Yeah. Now I don't know about you, but you imagine being his disciples. Let's assume there's all 12 there. You imagine however many disciples, there's, there's a handful compared to the amount of people, Justin. And about that time, they look over at one another and they say, I can see them look. There must be four, five, six thousand people here, Lord. Yeah. They said unto him, We have but five loaves and two fishes. Look what he says right here. And this is a commandment to us. And this, this brings me into my first point right here. We're talking about submitting unto the Lord. Yes. We're about talking about letting God have his way in our lives. He said, Bring them hither to me. Give me what you got. Christian Jesus today is saying to you, surrender to me your resources. Yeah. Give me what you got. Man, you're over here. You're all stressed out. You're wrapped tighter in a banjo street. And you're constantly leaning to your own understanding. Give it to me. Let me have what you got. I've allowed you to have it anyway. So what's Jesus really saying? Let me have it back now. <laughs> he gives it, and then he says, give it back to me. If they wanted to see a miracle that day, they really wanted to see a move of God in them 5,000 people. They had to surrender their entire resources yeah. to the Lord at that point. Now, it, it, it all takes place in about two verses right here. And the first point I am making is we got to surrender our resources to Christ. we got to give Him what we got. Eddie sings, lay your Isaac down. That song is indicative of God wanting to see what you're willing to sacrifice. Can you imagine Abraham taking his son up the hill? Think about that for a moment. When you really get to the point where you feel like and shame on us if we do but if you ever allow the devil to get you to the point of thinking you have arrived in this Christian life will you just step into the shoes of Abraham amen when you think you got perseverance in your life and I'm not trying to be critical or beat anybody up you step into the shoes of Noah when he was out there as a mockery in the wilderness praise God yeah when you think that you know what ridicule what persecution is you imagine stepping in the shoes of Moses, praise God, when they was behind him and he could hear everything they would say a negative about him. You're talking about getting your feelings hurt while we get our feelings hurt in church and for the littlest of nothing. And he heard them saying, this clown took us out here to get us to starve and to die and to thirst to death there. I wish we were just back in Egypt. He had good old fried garlic seed, lungs and or <laughs> lungs, garlic. You got what I'm saying. Onions, leeks, and garlic. And we fried them up and we had good dinner. See, that's what the devil's telling every Christian that's on the fence of backsliding. 
we'd have been better off back there in the clubs and the bars. At least I had this, at least I had that. Well, the devil can paint selective memory in their minds, can he? Lay your Isaac down, the song says. But let's get back to something here. Now, we're talking about point one, to We've got to surrender our resources to the Lord. I preach a message, and you might know of this right here. You know what to turn here? This comes out of Luke, Luke's gospel. And I always call this the man with six eyes. The man with six eyes. He was a me-centric guy. And this is the way the scripture goes, and we'll count the eyes. And I'm reading this because God allowed him to have everything he had. God has allowed you to have everything he had. But will you give it back to him? Are you willing to give it back like Abraham was willing to give Isaac back? Will you really lay your Isaac down for God? Or will you take what God has given you? And suddenly turn in your own direction with it. Don't forget, we're still in the wilderness there with the fishes and loaves. But this old man here in Luke chapter 12 said, and he thought within himself, this was this was a rich man right here. And what he had, God's tender mercies, as Eddie had saying, just the sheer mercies, the tender mercies, the patience, the love of God, minus any respect this man had for the Lord, God still allowed him to have a lot. He did. He did. Listen to what he said. This will I do. One, I too will put down my barn, pull down my barns, and I'll build greater, and there will I, there's three I, bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I, there's four I, will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take eat. Easy. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. I skipped a verse or something, but there's six eyes in yeah, there. Yeah. You saw what I'm talking about. Six eyes and four eyes in that. The bottom line was he was not willing to take what God had given him and to sacrifice it back and put the Lord first. So let's make a point in our mind tonight that we got to surrender our resources to Christ. And when we look at the ones the disciples gave to Jesus. Let's read on and listen to this. Verse 18. He said, bring them hither to me. Verse 19. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and he broke. And he gave the loaves to his disciples and his disciples to the multitude. Amen. Did you see where it said he made them to sit down? Yeah. Oh, he make us to lie down in green pastures sometimes, don't we? Yeah. There's sometimes I preach so many times. I used to think that meant that was comfortability. Sister Jan, sometimes that is affliction. Has anybody ever been in the green pastures of affliction in their life? Don't seem like green pastures in our terminology, does it? But what does an animal get from green pastures? They get a lot of nourishment. They get rest. They get strength. Sometimes when you lay them flat on your back and, man, you're going through something. Paul said, I had a thorn. But what Paul had, in essence, was a thorn that God wouldn't move because he made him to lie down in a green pasture in that thorn. But here he had the disciples. Listen to this now. He commanded them to sit down. And this is the second point. Jesus managed the supply. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Jesus is that great divine arranger that Laverne Tripp used to sing about. And he will manage your supply. Yes. Now, we are to be stewards of what God gives us, but a good steward will give it back to the Lord, and the Lord will manage it. You go out here and work and you make a lot of money. God blesses you with a good job and you've got a good paycheck and he gives it to you and you to give God what belongs to him. Amen. And I don't mean what's left over. I mean give to him what is his and he will manage and take care of what he gives back and allows you and gives you that good living. Praise God. Amen. These individuals getting back to the grassy slopes as Jesus commanded that they sat down and in another rendition in the word of God, it said that in ranks they sat down. They was in a system. Yes. 
God had and they sat down and here's what it got. Jesus managed to supply after they was obedient to surrender it all to him. Yes. Now here's the interesting part. Now it doesn't say that the fishes and loaves in this particular was in, in that, what, what it was in. It may have just been handed over in hand. But for some reason, when I think of this story, and probably because at the end the remains was in a basket, I think of them taking them out of a bag or a basket. But whatever be the case, if Jesus was taking it and breaking it, I believe true trust and surrender and allowing Christ to manage it. Somebody say, well, wonder how it took place, Tommy. Was it just appearing in his hands? I don't know how it took place. It's a divine miracle and a divine mystery. And the word of God is full of those. And we don't live by sight and human reasoning. We don't live by feelings. We walk by faith, praise God. I personally, in my mind, I don't believe they even remotely at that point was looking to see where it was coming no, from. No, uh -oh. I believe he was looking at Jesus. It, didn't run, out. it, didn't run out. it never ran out. It never ran out. And I believe that they would have got caught up looking to see. If one of them would have been looking at the other, look at his left hand. Has he got some in there? What's it going? Where'd that, where'd he pull that out of his pocket? Wonder if any more is going to come. I don't believe that entered their mind. Why do I say that? They was in the zone that Peter was in when Peter said, Lord, can I come to you? And he said, come. And he steps down. I believe it was about that high. And he went down and his foot hit the water. Yeah. He must have felt like Joshua when he was told to go to the Jordan. And he puts his foot down. He just went up on one side and shut off all the rivers. The Red Sea was up the side of Moses. But what kind of faith would it take to walk down and put your foot on the water and the devil going, oh, you're going to look stupid. Man, you're going to look dumb. And Peter getting out of the boat, boy, you're going to look awful dumb here in a minute. You're going to step down out of that boat. But Peter wasn't hearing that or he would have sunk in. Right. Peter wasn't giving that to the, to the devil. His ear was totally focused and zoned on Jesus. Joshua was zoned on the power and glory of God. Moses was zoned on the power and glory of God. And here we see the disciples zoned out, fully surrendered, and allowing God to, or Jesus to manage their supply, and that is why that took place, Amen. praise God. Yes, yes. He's in the miracle business today. He is. Yes. And thirdly, they was busy administering. I majored in ministry after I discovered the biblical studies was just getting a little too... And I'm glad I did because I love ministry. The gospel applies proper. Out of everything from divinity to ministry to biblical studies of theology, your most sincere believers oftentimes follow ministry because that's where the gospel is the road. And I love ministry. These guys were busy in the ministry of handling what they had given back to Christ and Christ gave it back to them. Did you see that? Did you see that? They had to surrender to Christ, allow Christ to manage it, and guess what it did? He multiplied it and gave it back to them. And then they ministered it to all the others. Amen. I can see him walking along. Here's yours. Here's yours. Here's yours. Hold on, I've got some bread to go with that. Yeah, no, hold on. Jesus, just, okay, you take it up there. You take it up there. I don't believe one of them disciples for one minute wavered in faith and said, who is he going to run now? Guys, if we are ever, ever, ever going to multiply for Christ in any way, we got to do exactly this formula here. we got to surrender. we got to trust God with it. we got to trust that he is going to give back what we need. He break and he gave. Guess what? He looked to heaven and he blessed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we definitely can't leave that out. And also we see a picture of the relationship between Christ and the Father. Yeah. Which is the model for our relationship to Christ. Remember that beautiful prayer in John 17 as he prays for us. I tell everybody, every time I bring that up, and I've mentioned it so many times in the church, but Guys, if you struggle in your identity in Christ as a believer, 
Even if you don't know Christ tonight, read John 17, because it's got a little bit for both. One, he speaks of this. And two, he speaks of the others that he wants to win, that he wants to bring. John 17 will really get you to see that compassion, that yearning that we just read for the sick that Jesus showed in verse 14. But he has that kind of compassion and love for you and I. One of the best ways for us to discourage ourselves as a Christian is to lose sight and the true value of our identity in Christ Amen. and what he accomplished on the cross. How much he value and try your best to realize that as much as we may love our children and our loved ones, he loves us more and I don't understand how that's possible. But praise God, I'm willing to take it. Thank you. Let's conclude here a little bit as we move on. They trusted him. They looked unto him. They trusted without waver. Let's move on. Look at this now. So he blessed it. He looked to heaven. He blessed it. He break it. He gave the loaves to his disciples and his disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat. Now, did it say they ate a little bit? They rationed it out. Did it say anywhere in there that he rationed it out? <laughs> you hear ration. That's when people, somebody, they're starving to death or they're in a plane crash and they're eating little bits and pieces of crackers and trying to make food out of toothpaste and they're drinking little lids of water. No, that ain't what Jesus was doing. It said that they were filled right here. That's one of the beautiful points of this story is that Jesus is literally the bread of life and we see Jesus become the bread of life in this very passage. Metaphorically and literally, he brings it to life right here. He break it. He gave it. It said that they were filled in verse 20. Yeah. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets. So they had to surrender what they had to the master's hand. That takes trust and obey. Trust and obey. Well, there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. You want to uh, you, you want to see an uncomfortable, disgruntled, unhappy Christian is one that tries to do one of them two words, but not both. Trust, but not obey. But I'm going to obey, but I don't really trust. But if you want to be happy in Jesus, that are very true words in that song. Yes. The old fence straddling the straddler and the backslider is so miserable. So they trusted the Lord and they was busy about the Father's business. Remember Jesus at 12 years old? It's like the first time we see him in Scripture. He got away from the caravan. They traveled like that in that day. People try to make it sound like Mary and Joseph were bad parents and everything. No, it just showed how close to their families were. And the left hand forgot what was in the right. She was all for the glory of God for him to say, I must be about the Father's business. But lastly, let's talk about these 12 baskets for a moment. Now, you know where I'm going from. And a brother and I were back here. Floyd was talking about 12 a moment ago. There's our 12 again. Yeah. <laughs> 12 baskets remain, one for each disciple. Let's assume 12 disciples. <laughs> Somebody may say, wow, they got a bonus there. No, it wasn't for them to eat. It's a testimony. Yes. For each of them to share. Yes. To give to someone else. And here's the beauty of it. Guess what? If they give those each, give their basket to someone else that came from that very miracle, and they share their testimony to encourage someone else in the Lord. <laughs> Guess what? Each basket. It feed 5,000. And then them are going to have 12 baskets remain, maybe five, maybe a hundred. God has no limits on his power. And if administered properly, the gospel administered proper, 5,000 more could be fed. 5,000 more could be fed. 5,000 more. Let me ask you this question. 
did we stop the baskets of bread anywhere and decide to sit down and eat our testimony? Or have we shared it with someone? Have we encouraged anyone in the Lord? Anybody knows me, probably sick of hearing me say, encourage, be encouraged. The Lord will never going to stop. God told me to do that. God told me to exhort people. I believe that we still have gifts that God gives us to do. And I believe God gave me the gift of exhortation to share with other people. And the phrase, be encouraged in the Lord, is in Uganda. It is in Zambia. It is in the Philippines. It made it to China. It made it to Sudan. It made it to Australia. Multiple states all over the U.S. I'm not making myself to be a hero. I'm just saying I'm nothing. But I want to do with what God gave me to do. Yeah. Amen. Because like the brother said, I am nothing. And I can tell you to be encouraged in the Lord. And you walk away from me and forget me, that's fine. Yeah. Don't ever forget <laughs> them words to be encouraged in the Lord. Because one day we'll be gone, and who is going to yeah. say it, do it? Where will it go then? Amen. I want to give my basket to you tonight. I have a basket left over of remains. It's my testimony. And I give it to you tonight. And I want you to take that, and I want you to give it to the next person. Amen. And share your testimony. <laughs> and watch them get the bread of life. Praise God. I said last night when we was up here, I looked at these other businesses. I don't wish bad on businesses. It's good for the economy. I didn't mean to sound facetious or sarcastic, but we had a better crowd than every business down through there. Got a better product. That's beautiful, man. Because we got a much better product. You're 100% right. Amen. Hey, man, as Brother Tommy Blake would say. <laughs> Hey, man, he used to have scared me to death. I'd be over there listening to him preach. I'd be on the front row. I'd be over there, and he'd be walking around, getting full with his glasses, and then all of a sudden, hey, man, I'd be like, we're going to get us a song here tonight, guys, and we're going we're gonna to give you an invitation. Let me ask you a question here in a minute before I go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Is it well with your soul tonight? So that's a song we're going to sing. Is it well? You know, I sat in a lot of church services in my life growing up. And I'd listen to invitation after invitation. And I'd sing the song, words, or what have you. But I wasn't right. And one day I got saved and it was well with my soul. Praise Praise Father God up in heaven, I come to you tonight. And, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity. And I pray tonight, Lord God, that if anybody needs you as the personal Savior, they've never surrendered, Lord. We talked about surrendering what we had. we got to surrender unto you as a sinner. And, God, you will give back a life much better than what we surrendered to you. Praise the Lord. At that point, we got to trust you.